Breaking Bread is brought to you by North York Community House, an organization that builds strong, resilient, and inclusive communities in Northwest Toronto. It's time for a shift. This is the shift. Hello everyone, my name is Paida and I'll be your host for today's episode of Breaking Bread, Stories of Black Communities in Transition. Our limited podcast series seeks to take a deeper dive into redevelopment and uncover the truth about this phenomenon in the city of Toronto. Throughout this journey, we'll be speaking to residents, community leaders, and industry experts to shed light on the experiences of those living through these major transitions providing further insight into the real consequences of urban redevelopment. This is episode three of Breaking Bread, stories of black communities in transition. This will be a continuation of our previous episode where we started to discuss the impacts of redevelopment and the impacts it has on its key stakeholders. Previously, we were joined by Shannon Spencer, who did a lovely job of characterizing the consequences of redevelopment and how people are being affected by it. Today, we plan on supporting her contributions by hearing firsthand accounts of what redevelopment has done to people and their communities. We'll be speaking to Jason McDonald, who will tell us about his experience as a business owner in the Eglinton West area, better known as Little Jamaica. Welcome. Uh, Welcome, Jason, to to our podcast. Uh, It's great to have you on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Uh, So today on the podcast, we have Jason McDonald. He is the owner of Casual Hair Salon. So Jason, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and the community you live in uh, and and the business that you have? Um, Yeah, well, um, I think it's from 1999, Casual Hair Salon. We've been on Eglinton West. Um, We're located at 1572 Eglinton Avenue West, right at the corner of Eglinton and Oakwood. Um, we, we deal with um, hair, hair care. It's a salon that caters for men, women, and children. Yeah, congratulations. That's, that's awesome to have a, a business for that long. Yes, and I, we give credit to the clients because the clients is what make our business um, with the longevity. It's because we have been requested and that's why we're able to stay around as long as most others weren't able to during the pandemic. Great, thanks, Jason. So you mentioned the pandemic, right? So how did COVID further impact your business alongside the gentrification happening because of the LRT construction? And how did you navigate these changes? Well, when I was the pandemic, I was really talking about the arrival of Metro Lynx. But um, you're right, it ended up becoming um, even more harder for the businesses with the arrival of COVID. But, um, you know, because of Metro Lynx's arrival on Eglinton West since 2010, um, I think they prepared us to navigate our businesses in ways that, you know, we weren't probably used to doing in the in years past you know what i mean um at least during the covid 19 we were able to get business relief um all type of subsidies all type of programs catering for the business so um really on eglinton our biggest dilemma was the what you would call the gentrification um the arrival of metro links you know but um hopefully better days are here to come because you know it's been about 12 years now so hopefully this construction can be close to the end than it is to when we started from 2010. 
Wow, it's been a while, <laughs> a long while. And I just wanted to know, were there any supports available to you from Metrolinx or the city uh, during this gentrification and construction? No, no support was given. Um, a lot of talking was going on from all type of different angles, but when it comes on to support, um, no. Um, I've spoken to Metrolinx lawyers, spoken to um, we were Catherine Wynn, we spoke to John Torrey, we, we spoke um, to Jamie Robinson, to Peter Versi, um, Marco Mendencino, and, you know, Carol Mulroney. We spoke to everybody, but there was no, nothing was given to the businesses. Um, I don't know if you know, we started a group called OPMB 100. That included all of um, the, some of the businesses at the time. At, at that time, it was over 40 something businesses. Right now, OPMB is only about 13 businesses because a lot of the businesses closed down. So it's, 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 it was, the, yeah, the, the real pandemic for us was, was the arrival of Metrolinx. The, 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 um, the COVID-19 was um, really, it was it was better to us, COVID nineteen than Metrolink's arrival. I'm not saying it was it was it's it's a you know, and I'm not wishing it to happen, but I'm just saying with the arrival of COVID that kind of helped a lot of the small businesses because the government started taking care of businesses in general, and that's how we got grouped into it. Um, and it seems like a real coalition has been formed with uh, with other Black-owned businesses in the area. What do you think will happen to those remaining Black-owned businesses after the construction is done? I remember, even remember, you know, even before Metro Links and COVID, businesses had their own struggles, and businesses locked down for their own reasons. Reasons is so. Um, you know, I, I can't tell you what's going on with another business. I know casual plans to be here. You know, we, we, we've been here, we're a staple. So we don't really have any plans of leaving Eglinton West. But um, I can't really speak for the other businesses. I don't really know even which businesses. Because there's a lot of new businesses on Eglinton right now. Okay. There's a lot, there's a lot of new businesses. So, because um, a lot of businesses closed down. So I don't really know all of the, the business owners as I used to. Right. So I'm familiar with, with, with them. And then I'll be able to give you a better answer on that question. Yeah, yeah. And the new businesses coming in, do they sort of fit the current climate of Little Jamaica? Are they catering to, to most of the demographic? What type of new businesses are coming in? Well, I, I um, you know, I see a lot of weed shops hmm. that wasn't around before. Um, you know, I see a lot of, um, yeah, it's always the same restaurants, clothing stores, but um, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't, I, I, I'm not the best person to respond on that because as I said, there's, there's so much new businesses out there. I don't even know what some of those businesses are offering. So, we, you know, you spoke about a lot of the negative impacts about Metro Links. Um, so I was wondering, have you, and this might be an interesting question to answer, I don't know if you have an answer for it, but have you experienced any positive changes in your community through this redevelopment, if any? It's all about perspective. So it depends on which perspective you're coming from. You know, if, like if people are property owners, their 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 real estate went up, so that's that's a great thing for them. You know what I mean? If you're a property owner, over the last X amount of years, you've seen your property go up to millions of dollars. So that's a great thing for if um, casual. We don't own the building, so because we don't own the building, we don't we don't benefit like that. You know what I mean? So everybody has different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Also, Metrolinx is good from that perspective. To me, at least. But um, otherwise, from that, when you're a small business and you're you're trying to go about your business, they they they, they can they can 
destroy businesses easily. Mm -hmm. Like that's what they that's what they've done. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? They've destroyed businesses, so it's hard to say from our perspective um, what good they've done. At least we know who our real clients are. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we lost. That. <laughs> yeah, they weeded out a lot of our clients, <laughs> but um, otherwise, from that, from our business perspective, no, Metrolinx did us no favors. They 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 hindered our business big time, big time. So because of that, you know, it's hard for me to look at it from that perspective. Mm. Have you received any sort of apology? or um, some form of grant or subsidy from Metrolinx, you know, maybe to increase your signage and, and help with that customer flow again. Because uh, for our listeners, if you've ever driven past Casuals, uh, Barbershop, the, the, the construction is mounting right in front of his doorstep. It, and in fact, it's, it, it's, it's difficult for, for clients just to, to navigate there if they're driving or, or walking in. Um, so have you received any sort of apology or, or acknowledgement that, that there are these changes and that they are sorry? They haven't issued, they haven't done nothing, no, no form of reimbursement, no apology. They've, they've, they, they've used my parking. They've done, a, I can't even go into it. It's, the, the, the list is long. Remember, this is from 2010. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 12 years. Well, hopefully the end is in sight. I know. I, I am hopeful that uh, little Jamaica will will have some form of vibrancy again. I, I know that there is a the Little Jamaica Association, which is really trying to to revive the heritage site. So we'll see if that uh, yeah that helps with with bringing little Jamaica back. Hopefully, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for uh, coming on to our podcast and, and just sharing a bit about uh, how gentrification and, and Metrolinx developments have really impacted your business. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for sharing your insights. This is the shift. Big change, big things in the phase. Yeah, big change, big things in the phase. Yeah, big change, big things in the phase. Yeah. This podcast is brought to you by North York Community House. North York Community House built strong, resilient, and inclusive communities in Northwest Toronto. We help children, youth, parents, and seniors become active, engaged citizens who lead positive change in their neighborhoods. Find us at nych.ca.